Yeah, so hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Brugang Prabhu. I work with DNHS as a scientist B with collection, reference and collection department. And today we will be, you know, trying to introduce ourselves to amphibians and, you know, try to look forward to have a nice and colorful introduction to it. <laughs> so, can I start? start? Yes, sir. Yeah, so many of you know amphibians uh, are of two types, like frogs and toads. So we'll be looking into detail like what they are, how they are, how to identify them. So, so what are amphibians? So they are the first terrestrial vertebrates and you know, very old, uh, very ancient uh, lineage. And then they are they have dual mode of life. And why they are called as amphibian is amphi is many and bions is life. So they share two lives. That's what it's called as because they have two mode of lives. One is in water as a tadpole, and other one is a you know terrestrial mode of life, which is called adult frog after metamorphosis. So their role in nature is they are very abundant and everywhere. So they keep the most important role in nature is to be. Uh, you know, they keep check insects and also they serve as a food base for a huge other, uh, you know, superior taxa. Uh, they are very highly sensitive to temperatures. That's the reason why they are also very important for climate change and other studies. Then they are very cryptic and hence overlooked. That means they are their habitats, they, they have developed themselves uh, in such a way that they need very, you know, uh, small space, uh, you know, space requirement is very small. So they are very cryptic. They are not easily found. And hence they are overlooked, like they are not been known, not, not much has been known about them. So what can I do in, you know, context with amphibians? This we will, you know, discuss at end of the slideshow. So amphibians, so life evolved in water, then metamorphosis is done. So they lay eggs, uh, you know, if you can see here, uh, everyone can see the cursor, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So there is the first egg and then the tadpoles from egg hatch up and they you know remain in water they spend their life like period of so life evolved in what uh, so the amphibians life evolves in water then they metamorphose and most of the tadpoles stays uh, respiration is by skin and gills and they are very soft skin they are mainly divided into two types like frogs and toads and then sicilians and salamanders so now we'll Look forward, like what they are. So here on this slide, you can see this earthworm, like uh, you know, individual. This is a Sicilian. It's not earthworm. If you can see closely, like you can see an eye here. These are the mouth parts, and then there are you know annuli all over the body. So these are Sicilians, these are not earthworms. Now how to, uh, you know, recognize them in field is earthworms uh, break easily. This is the first thing what you can, you know, always try to look for, but Sicilians won't. And these are amphibians. Uh, then this is a tree frog. This is, these are frogs. Then even this is a uh, resplendensis frog. And there are then toads. Uh, so, where to look for them? So, they are everywhere. They are found, they are burrowing, then there are terrestrial, aquatic, as well as arboreal forms. So, we'll look them one by one. So, there are types of amphibians. If you go scientifically, they are divided into three you know, different groups, apoda, that is without legs. 
then there is caudata which is uh, with legs as well as tail and there is anura which is tailless so we look at sicilians so these are legless as well as tailless you know are from like, like amphibians with annular segments these are the annular segments if you can see some serrations on their body and then position of tentacles is here so there are different uh, characters by which you know animals are identified as a single species so so these characters are like tentacles position of eyes nose tree number of annuli structure of cloacal opening shape of tail like are some of the important characters used for taxonomy and there are like more than 35 species found in india so now this is the difference between sicilian and earthworm and a snake i hope it is quite visible like how different it is and there is you won't find an head as well as eye structure in earthworms you will easily find them in sicilians and snakes too so now general characters of sicilians are as i said you know eye is very distinct there are tentacles mouth part nostril so and these are the annula on which like count uh, so number of you know complete as well as incomplete and the secondary group these are all the characters which are you know uh, taken into consideration while identifying these animals so we have only one tail and limb uh, amphibian that is uh, malian newt or salamander this is the only species we have in and there is no other species here so now tailless amphibians or the anura so this is the most diverse group which is found here in india like western ghats as well as northeast india so we have ample of you new know, species in this you will be like you know coming across uh, in this presentation also So now we look at within anura we have two uh, types one is frog one is toad so what are the differences in frogs and toads so frog is basically a smooth skin uh, and a very moist skin animal as well as toad is a toad has like rough skin as well as dry dry and rough skin so if you look at this individual it has no rotty skin that is very rough as well as dry and this is a frog which has a moist skin and there are like you know they found all over the habitat so like the tuffrinus melanostictus or a common toad is everywhere and then as we go ahead you will also you know know about their habitats and different types so now how to recognize toads so if you look at this this is called as parotid gland it's a bulge kind of a you know rat like a biggest rat on the toad's head near the eye or about exactly above the tympanum on basis of that uh, and many people say they these are the poison glands but it doesn't affect human beings it is only uh, it only affects the predator you know it gives a bad taste it's uh, that's why these frogs are not palatable and as they escape when the prey uh, predator attacks them then these are the rots uh, the rotty skin which they have so this is you know the picture of common indian toad which is very common throughout india you get them everywhere then there are a few unique toads like xanthophyne tigranus this is found in amboli this is the uh, you know only member from this particular uh, you know uh, genus and interestingly it you know uh, lays its egg on the lateratic plateau wherein there are very temporary puddles are formed during first showers of you know monsoon 
and they will lay their eggs there and that's all like and they so they breed on the in the very temp, uh, temporary you know based water pools then these are arboreal toads we have this uh, you, you know you get this from uh, down south uh, you know goa till uh, kerala or kanyakumari so they have if you see they are the the digits or the you know finger toe tips are very dilated just because this is an adaptation to you know hang on to a leaf so that's why they are you know they are called as tree toads also frogs uh, so they on the basis of habitat looking at the habitat you can always tell what kind of frogs you can because they are very specific so mostly there are like aquatic then there are uh, stream dwelling uh, amphibians then there are tree dwelling amphibians then there are marsh specific species so these all things and they get adapt they have adapted themselves in such a way that they fit into these particular you know habitats very well so if you look at this particular frog it's a bicolor or called as crinotarsus curtiseps so if you look at the tympanum they have it's very distinct that means uh, they have you know they frogs do call for advertisement you know during their breeding uh, season so that's why their air uh, you know tympanum is very well developed then their skin you know is having very, very much pigmentation like very, uh, coloration is amazing you know just to get camouflaged in the habitat and if you look at uh this particular frog looking at this i can tell that uh, i can say that you know this particular frog uh, stays more in you know uh confined water pools because the hind limbs are webbed uh, like uh, so the, you know it swims very well so these are few other you know types of amphibians which do burrow like these are the this is a burrowing one uh then this is aquatic like a eucalyptus species which you always uh, call it as um, commonly called as cricket frog you always see them on the surface of or you know stagnant water pools then this is uh hylarana uh, rensia ka species which we uh, will always found them find them you know along the streams like fast flowing streams but not in into the streams along the sides of you know the streams then there are arboreal arboreal frogs like bush frogs which we will look into detail ahead so now burrowing frogs how to identify them as burrowing like they have very you know stout body and they will have you know very short or like a toad like body hind limbs are short and well developed because they have to dig you know themselves to get uh, you know to burrow inside and metatarsal tubercle is very well developed eyes are small some in some cases they are large and very slightly you know granular body these are the characters by which you can also you know look at the individual and tell that whether it is a burrowing frog or it is a you know a water inhabited individual so now the terrestrial ones if you look at the terrestrial ones uh you will see that their you know hind limbs are very less webbed even the fore limbs and they don't have you know much discs because they don't need them you know they don't have to stick on some some uh, something they are like free free roaming uh, you know animals on the in the grass stands along the stream edges everywhere you will find them especially in the litter uh, in forest floor you will find them and they are very robust you know hind limbs so that they can jump very you know take longer jumps so the narrow mouth frog if you will find them you know mostly in the grassland areas where they have very short and stout body snout then small, you know very small jaw line and they are very you know triangular in shape uh, so the group in uh, you know is called as ramonella or microhyla group where in there are like you know five five species 
which inhabit grasslands or in some cases tree holes if you can look here uh, the digits are you know uh, dilated here so that they can hang on to you know trees whereas in microhyla so this is microhyla uh, the digits are not that much dilated so these are aquatic and semi aquatic uh, amphibians this is euphleptis this is a cricket frog uh, and this is skipping frog so if you look at their digits they are you know very narrow they don't they don't have dilated discs uh, on the toes usually you find them in you know marshy areas like you know paddy fields or on the stream edges and their snout is elongated their position of eyes you know is lateral as a lateral side not you know angular to the nose just because what if you look at this fellow you know the reflectors it will always have you know, to angular to their nose because they have to always you know they will be like always uh, you know floating on the surface of water looking you know at the uh, or doing, being vigilant so now racophorids or uh, these are the two tree frogs so this whole racophorid group includes bush frogs tree frogs gliding frogs and they have very well developed discs on fore and hind limbs so their overall body is slender you know modified to be on uh, you no know, small leaf and to cling on to you know uh, bushes they they have uh, you know ventrally granular uh, skin and their unique uh, behavior include direct development in bush frogs and so there the tadpole stage is uh, skipped and so they directly give you know birth to young ones and in came in case of you know tree frogs they make foam nests so we will see that ahead so this is how you know so instead of a tadpole directly young one you know comes out of the egg and this is the bush frog and they are very small in size when they are you know when they come out and this is direct development so these are you know few colorful you know pictures of frog as this is very you know charismatic group also to work on so if you look at this species it's called like acropel raji and, and this uh, and this is called as a clandry or a clandra bush frog so there is a reed uh, called as a clandra which you get in down uh, you know in the western southern western ghats this particular frog is confined to this particular habitat uh, or that particular grass so you will find it there uh, where there is you know clandra and the a very unique breeding uh, uh, you know reproduction behavior wherein male and female goes inside these you know bamboo like uh, reed and they call from there and then you know the male also guards the eggs inside that particular you know bamboo reed so this is uh, rorquestus tinians and these are you know found on the grassland uh shula grasslands in the southern western ghats and there are so there is a signet uh, this one is signetus this is resplendens this is you know very weird looking though uh you know, rorquestus i would say uh, it has a very you know you can see these are the fat bodies uh, you know which they require because this particular individual is found you know on ebiculum uh, uh uh you know the highest peak where the temperature you know goes down to you know, sometimes you know 5 degrees or 3 degrees during monsoon so yeah 